no boots on because you're going to get your toes tapped toes tapped on tonight. Toes tapped on? Yeah. Well, I hate getting my toes tapped on. I want a sledgehammer tonight. Brother Matthew is going to preach the word to us. That's the Bible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He's going to use right the Bible. Don't, don't, don't tap. All right. He's going to use the Bible. That's the Matthew. All right. He's going to use the Quran, guys. All right. You know, it's okay, Brian, uh, for giving the words. If, if we were one of those charismatic churches, you know, we could just throw our hands up in the air and no one would know the difference. But we're a Baptist church, so it's okay. We understand. Yeah. Amen, brother. Turn in your Bibles to Luke 18. <clears throat> Luke 18. I have said before that I believe one of the greatest shortcomings of the modern church is that we've forgotten that we must pray. Mm. That's true. That's true. I believe that if we prayed, that we would see God work in ways that we could only imagine. I've seen it happen before. I've seen where we pray uh, in churches and we saw God move in, in, in miraculous ways. And whether you say that God actually changed the path of history according to our prayers, or that God changed us, it doesn't really matter. That's the right. truth remains yeah. that good, yeah. the yeah. blessings of God were upon us because yeah. we prayed. Amen. 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 So I want to ask you, how long did you pray yesterday? Ooh. Don't 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 say the answer, please. But think in your mind, I want you to think a number. You know, best guess. How long did you pray yesterday? All right, raise your hand if you have the answer in your head. Don't say that loud, but raise your hand if you have the answer in your head. Or if you honestly don't know, then you can raise your hand. That's fine, too. Okay, I want everyone to think in their head. Everyone, absolutely every person. So every person, if you're sitting in the black chair tonight, it's for you. How long did you pray yesterday? Okay, you have your answer. Thank you, Bill. It's worried about you. All right, you can put your hands down. Now, I want you to think, how long did you watch TV yesterday? Good or how long were you on your smartphone yesterday? Mm -hmm. oh. Or how long were you on, I realize it's on the smartphone, how long were you on social media? Mm. For all the older people, that's Facebook and Twitter. Kevin, <laughs> 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 he's top either one. <laughs> <laughs> and Instagram. And Instagram. Sorry, Brother Brian. <laughs> that might Alright, so I did some research on, on the internet. And the average American, the average American in one day, now they do some of these, you know, multitasking, but the average American watches almost five hours of TV every day. That's live TV, that's not Netflix, that's live TV. The average American is on their smartphone, on their smartphone for an hour and a half a day. They're, the average American is on the internet on their computer for an hour a day. Now, I couldn't find any uh, specific surveys, but the best estimates I found said that the average Christian prays anywhere from one to ten minutes a day. The average pastor prays about 40 minutes a day. Now, I'm not going to be legalistic and say you have to pray X number of minutes every day. But I believe that if we look at the time we spend on prayer compared to the time we spend on other things that can help show us what is most important in our life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I believe that it is a necessity in this new year that we pray. And if we want to have the blessings of God, if we want to have a new year, forget losing weight. It's not going to happen. Just let's be honest. It's not going to happen. Forget turning over a new leaf. Forget finding the new job. Our first priority in this new year, if we want to see the blessings of God in our life, we must pray. And now this brings us to Luke chapter 18. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18. Follow along with me as we read the eight, first eight verses of the chapter. This is Jesus. And he, Jesus, spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, 
Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord Jesus said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Jesus has a story, and just in simple English, there's a woman, a widow, and she was cheated by some person. The Bible doesn't say who, but I'm pretty sure it's a used car salesman or something, something like that. And she came to the judge in the city and said, Judge, this guy cheated me out of some money. And I would imagine being a widow, maybe she had a kid, maybe she was trying to feed the kid, and she said, I need this money, I need you to avenge me, I need you to make this right. And the judge said, I'm not going to. I don't care about you, just go away. But she came day after day, and I can just picture her camping out in front of his store like it was an Apple store on the iPhone day, saying, help me, please avenge me, take up my cause. And finally he said, enough! I'm tired and sick of hearing from you. I'm going to do what you ask me to do. Not because I care about you, but just say so you'll shut up and leave me alone. And Jesus said, won't God do even better than that when we come before his throne and beg and plead before his throne asking him for what's on our heart? <coughs> so Jesus said, prayer is a necessity. And I see three, three reasons from this passage why we must pray, why it is a necessity that we pray this year. First, we must pray because it aligns our focus. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Mm -hmm. He said, always pray. Paul said it a little differently. He said, pray without ceasing. Now, this, of course, doesn't mean that we must pray every single second of the day. But when you say, so-and-so is always talking to his girlfriend, does that mean he's always 24-7 talking to his girlfriend? No. But it does mean that what's on the top of his brain all the time. You know, he's either talking to his girlfriend or he's thinking about talking to his girlfriend. And Paul says, and Jesus says, we must pray always. And by doing that, that puts prayer in the top of our mind as we're thinking about talking to God. And if we put prayer first in our mind, that's going to put God first in our mind. That's going to align our focus so we must pray, and the result of that is that we won't lose heart. When we pray, we shouldn't lose heart. We need to keep praying. So we pray first because it aligns our focus. <coughs> Second, we must pray because it recognizes our dependence. Mm, that's true. That's good. The woman said, I can't make this situation right on my own. Mm -hmm. She said, I need the help of the judge. So when we go before God, we are in a very real way saying, God, what I'm praying about right here, I can't handle this on my own. I need you to help me with this. Now, do you agree that we're dependent on God? Raise your hand if you agree with that. Yeah. We're dependent on God. Okay, everyone raises their hand. But now, how many times do we live our lives like we don't believe that? How many times do we take that test in school and we think, I did good on that test because I studied hard? Or we get that promotion at work and we think, I got that promotion because I'm a good worker. And we forget the fact that God is the one that gave us the ability and that without God, we are totally incapable of doing anything. Amen. When we pray, we remind ourselves, hey, I can't do this on my own. I am underneath God and I'm dependent on God. So we must pray because it makes us continually recognize our dependence on God. It aligns our focus on God. And then finally, it prepares us for Christ's return. This is an odd one. But Jesus is the one that made this connection. That's exactly right. You see in verse 8, yeah. often when you're trying to figure out what's the main purpose of the parable, you go to the last verse. Because Jesus will often summarize, why did I say all of this? Well, this is why. Yeah. So he spoke about prayer. He said, you need to pray. And then in verse 8, he says... I tell you that God will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So the whole end result of this is, Jesus asks, when I come back, when I return, am I going to find people faith? Am I going to find people that are still following me? 
If we are praying, I believe we will be faithful. Amen. It's going to be hard to pray and not be faithful. Prayer is an important way to ensure that we are ready for the return of Christ. Amen. Prayer must be something that we place of the utmost importance in our life. Amen. When you look through the history of the church, yeah. it is filled with great people of prayer. Yeah. It's not filled with great people that forgot prayer. You're right. If we want to make a difference in our lives, and if we want to make a difference in the life of others, we must recognize the necessity of prayer. Prayer is necessary because it causes us to align our focus on God. It causes us to recognize our dependence on God. And finally, it prepares us for the return of Christ. Amen. And I hope that each one of us will decide, and more than to decide, but actually do, a life of prayer. In this Amen. 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 I'm like you, man. So apparently, a guy needs no introduction. Not new for us. Bill Drummond. Not oh, waiter. Bill Drummond. <laughs> What's funny about that is that was my nickname in the high school, was Doctor Bill. Was it really? Yeah, my older brother had a had a friend that stepped. On, he walked around our neighborhood barefoot all the time, and he stepped on some broken bottle, got glass in his feet, and um, <clears throat> come in the house. He was a Puerto Rican. He was, oh man, I got glass in my feet. And so uh, I said, sit down, man, I'll get it out. So I dug it out for him, put a little medicine on it, put a bandaid on it, and then I'll have a doctor. Doctor, really? All right. Um, uh, that has nothing to do with my message, by the way. Um, yeah, just a fun fact. You can't get home with it, that's for free. Um, I got thinking about this uh, past year and what the uh, new year has in store. I was thinking about how we seem to be moving more and more towards society that is extremely smart but lacks wisdom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Um, how there are two billion people in this world that have some kind of access to the internet or use it regularly. That's one out of three people. Now you think, hey, that don't sound so crazy. Get out of your Western folks. Think about the yeah. whole globe. Yeah. One billion uh, use Facebook on a regular basis. That's, that's as many people as there are in China. Um, what? Yeah, there's about a billion people in China. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's not the surprising part for me. <laughs> um, and I, I was thinking, what if some of those folks could be in church? You know, what if some of those folks were could could uh, claim Christianity? You know, one of the big issues of 2015. Um, I, I don't know if, if uh, it's happening here necessarily, but it, it seems to be all in the media. Is uh, how people self-identify themselves. Uh, Men and boys are coming forward and saying they now self-identify as girls or women and vice versa. <clears throat> How great it would be if they would identify themselves as under the leadership of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. Schools are now installing unisex bathrooms so that we don't have to discriminate and identify them as boys' rooms or ladies' rooms. Um, how awesome it would be if schools would actually teach something of eternal value. As of December 27th, Star Wars has made $1.9 billion with a B. Billion dollars. Can you imagine if some of that money was tithed? 
That'd be awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah.
in North America, the whole rest of the world has been suffering just terrible persecution. They say last year more people died for Christ around the world than, than died in the entire time of the Roman persecutions. Wow. You think about the Christians of the lions and, and uh, trying to uh, boil John alive and, and trying to uh, burn uh, Polycarp on the stake. All, you think about all those persecutions, all those martyrs. And they're just a drop in the bucket compared to the ones that died just last year. You're right. <clears throat> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So what's the answer? Okay, Bill, you, you, you've told me that these are, are truly dark times. And now you've got me worried. I was thinking all hopeful about the new year and, and how wonderful it's going to be. But you know, the, the funny thing about darkness is the darker it is, the more opportunity there is for one light to make a difference. Right? And that's us. Hey, this is a perfect time to be a Christian. It's an exciting time to be a Christian. Because we will stand out more and more. And the, and the fakers, the, the pretenders, the, the play actors will slowly melt away. And, and all the, the chaff and, and the, and the uh, stubble, they'll, they'll burn off. Mm. As this persecution grows and grows and grows, the <laughs> ones that are truly committed to Jesus, the ones that are really on fire for Him, will come through it like silver tried seven times in the fire. Mm. But, what's the solution? <clears throat> what does Paul say the solution? Verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, well, wait a minute. All right, so you're saying I should just remember stuff? What stuff? Verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy Amen. scriptures, Amen. the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Listen. In a storm, a ship does one thing. What does it do? Besides start praying really hard. Remember Daniel? All, the, all those pagan sailors start praying to their gods? Yeah. They'll make you pray in a storm. But what's the one thing you do? You drop anchor, right? You want something solid to hold on to in a storm. This is that solid thing. Hey, 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 hey. This is the rock that you can build that house on. Come on. In, in times of, of shifting sands, of morality, of what's being called right, of culture, of, of societal norms that are no longer normal, and it wasn't always this way. But there, there is, I'm, I'm here to tell you, there's one thing that has not changed. In 6,000 years. And that's this word. That came straight from God. Amen. Into our hands. Man, it, I've always said it should be the front page headline of every newspaper every day. God wrote a book. And he wants you to read it. And he wants you to know it. And he wants you to live it. Listen to what he says. And um, my apologies to um, uh, Mike Favaris. He did a much better job teaching this than I'm ever going to do. But... Over here in uh, uh, Jeremiah 23, he says in verse 28, 23, 28, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Right. God's word is compared to wheat. It is compared to a fire. It is compared to a hammer. Mm. Think, think really hard and, and really meditate on that for a second. First off, we have to feed that inner man, right? That's right. He cannot be allowed to starve. Right. We feed him by reading the Word, by meditating on the Word, by praying over this Word, by just soaking it in, making it a part of us and a part of our life. Um, and then it, it's a fire, and fires do great things. Fire, no, you know, it's hard for us to understand in this Miracle age. Mm -hmm. Think about a, a time when fire was the really only power that there was available. 
Uh, uh, William Manchester wrote a really great book one time I read about the Middle Ages, uh, Dark Ages, excuse me, called A World Lit Only by Fire. Um, can you imagine a world where that was really your only source? And it has such potential and such greatness to it. But it's also very dangerous and, you, and bad things can happen if you use it wrongly. But that's God's word too, right? It has such great power and such great strength. But people are out there uh, bending it, twisting it, trying to use it wrongly. And uh, hopefully like uh, Phineas and... Uh, Verb, yes, thank you. That was exactly the name I was looking for. Um, they will be killed by that strange fire. Um, and then, like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Elsewhere, the, the heart that refuses God is called a stony heart. But this word is, is a hammer that beats that off and knocks it loose and gets down to the soft center that God can actually speak to. He can't speak to that hard rock and get through but this word will bust it up. Listen, I, and I'll, I'll finish with this. Um, I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, it's, it's a, 2015 was a crazy year, man. A lot of stuff I thought I would never see, I saw happening in the news. We're taught to, to hate authority, um, hate the cops. Um, uh, we, we're, we've got to love our enemies and hate our friends around the world. It's just a really crazy time. Everything seems upside down and all here. But through all of it, my hope is not in Washington. Amen. My hope is not in, in Broadway or in um, uh, Hollywood or, That's right. yes, or in any of those places. Um, right. My hope is not in the UN building in Amen. New York City. Right. My hope is in this. And this is a rock that you can cling to in the storm. Yes, sir. And, and the worst storms are coming, I'm sure. Yeah. But... This is what you can hold on to. Mm. Hey, hey, that's good. Good job. Good, job. good, job. good preaching. All right, since I insulted two people already by not introducing them, I'll start introducing people. Oh, <laughs> we might as well insult everybody. Actually, what I'm going to what I'm going to call Equal opportunity. Don't worry, I'm going to preach. I'll insult everybody. <laughs> what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to let Pastor Andrews preach now because he looks like he's about to fall asleep. That'll wake him up. <laughs> and when I preach, I'll wake him up. So he'll be able to stay awake the rest of the evening if he preaches now. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> 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 what is this? Insult the old <laughs> man night or something? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that still wasn't an introduction. That was the Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 right. It's kind of interesting because um, Pastor Andrews left his church at the same time, about the, kind of the same time I left my church. Now, I don't compare the two because he started his been there 30 years. I was only at my church for three years. But the point is this, there was a connection there. I actually applied to that church when I found out he was leaving. I didn't even know him, didn't know anything about him. But anyway, then I got to know him at camp and listen to him preach and, and find out who the man was. And they both ended up back at the same church, members of the same church. And uh, just, uh, this is a great man. I wanted to kind of have him come preach tonight Here he with this great man that preached. And everybody else is preaching great man. But anyway, that's the introduction. Because that's all I got left. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew Kennedy, I knew you'd Kennedy. I already met your wife, and I recommend that they not. I'm glad we ended up here. That's what I'm trying to do. We're really going to thank you because we had a lot of opportunities to be in a lot of churches. And God bless us here. And it's difficult, uh, your young pastor, our young pastor, when you got he's got at least two older preachers in the congregation and young ones, and uh, he's human. So in his mind, uh, are they accepting what I'm saying? Well, we're not told him as long as he preaches the word, we will accept what he says. Amen. We may not like the way he says it, but we will accept what he says. <laughs> <laughs> and it is strange that fifty. That's for most of you were a twinkle in your daddy's eyes. Fifty years ago tonight, I preached my first sermon. I was 15 years old in a watch night service. They gave me five minutes. I get 10 tonight. So must be <laughs> Move up. Move up now. But uh, 50 years. And the verse I'm going to give you tonight, I didn't always accept. And that verse is simply John 3 and verse 30. Mm. He must increase, yeah. but I must oh, decrease. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. 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 Mm. 
There's a lot of times that we try to impress people. We have been complimented, of course, we've been cussed, we've been accused, we've been threatened. <laughs> if you make a stand for the Lord, yes, sir. you better get a tough hide, That's true. Yeah, brother. pray for them, as Brother Matt said, right. and for absolute spite, outlive them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> We're trying to impress people. All that's been done here in the seat, the singing, and the pastor from Eden, and tonight with four or five men of God sharing the Word of God. We didn't, I didn't come here tonight to impress you. I'm impressed that they would pick an old man like me. And at first I said no. Might, might have a speaking engagement. But I came back after God spoke to me and said, Brother David, I believe that those young people and young men and women are just as important as any place else I might be tonight. Now, I normally would have been in bed two hours. But <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? I'm going to get through college. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a little fun. And then I'll settle in an old church like this and they'll give me a job and I'll serve the Lord the rest of my life. I said the same thing. When I was 15 years old, right after I got saved, I got saved in May. In June, I helped out in Bible school. In July, my pastor gave me a Sunday school class. He said, would you like to teach Sunday school? And before I could say yes or no, I had a Sunday school class of second grade boys. I'm 15 and they're in the second grade. When we go back to Northern Virginia now and we visit our hometown, we still know two or three of those boys and some of those girls that we knew all those years ago that are still in church, still serving God. And one said this to me some months back, and it clicked as David asked me to speak tonight. And they said, we remember you saying when you were in your early 20s, if we will just allow the Lord to be first, everything else will fall in place. You won't have, if you're in the ministry, you're not going to have all the money you want. If you go to the mission field, you're not going to have all the money, all the prestige, all the honors that the world has to offer you. But like the pastor said tonight, there will come a day, and it might be tonight before this year ends, that we will stand before the Lord. What crowns will we have to lay at His feet? That's right. That's right. Now, when you're your age, you ain't thinking about nothing but having fun and chasing girls. So man, I agree. I want you married. <laughs> you better be only chasing one. <laughs> I've had mine for 40 some years. I quit chasing a long time ago. Besides, I wouldn't know what to do with them. I'd have to throw them out. <clears throat> Who's increasing in your life? When somebody looks at you, you're not in church, you're not with your family, you're not with your friends, you're not with anybody. If somebody looked at you in public, would they see the Lamb of God without you being holier than thou? Would they, would they look at that person and say, you know, there's something different. I get this asked all the time to me. People will come up to me and they'll say, you must be a preacher. And I'll say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And they'll say, every time we see